Flipping and Wholesaling Houses in New York show. I am Michael Pinter. Wow, my desk is a mess. Um, where I teach you how to start uh, flipping and wholesaling houses in New York, or if you're already doing it, how to grow your business. Now, question I got is a general question. I think it came some, from somebody outside New York. It's how to get a seller to pay closing costs. Now, closing costs are dramatically different in New York than any other place. They are incredibly larger in New York. And there are seller closing costs and buyer closing costs that are both significant. Um, it's not uncommon for me to figure on a buy and a sell, I'm going to have twenty-five dollars to $30,000 in costs. When I tell it to people like in, in North Carolina or even in Texas, they look at me like I'm nuts. So let me explain what closing costs consist of, both on the buy and the sell, why you would want a seller to pay closing costs, how to get a seller to pay closing costs, why it may or may not happen in New York. Stay to the end, I'll explain to you why it's probably not as applicable in New York as it is in other states. Now, typical for closing costs in other states would be 600, 800 bucks, something simple. In New York, when I buy a property, I'm usually figuring it's gonna be $10,000, depending on the size, right? Depending on the, the, the size of the, the price of the property. Um, larger properties gonna have more closing costs, and we'll talk about why. So let's talk about what closing costs consist of when we buy. So first of all, there's a legal fee. Two to three thousand dollars, which already people will think is nuts when they talk when they look at from other states. Title charges probably be a three to four thousand dollars. That searches, insurance, departmentals. That's something you don't have in other places, but you have, someone has to actually go down to each county and run a housing and building search and a street search and a sewer search. Three to four thousand dollars right there. Then you're gonna have to pay taxes that are due well within ninety days. And that can be considerable. Sometimes in Suffolk County, some of the taxes are due once a year. I have to pay $10,000 just in taxes because I have to pay the whole amount. Now, if I sell the property in less than a year, I'm going to get a refund, which brings us to the next part. You have to refund the seller for any prepaid taxes. So that's without taking a loan, right? So $10,000 is pretty straightforward um, uh, on, on buying property without taking. If you're taking a loan, you got to figure out whatever points you're paying on the loan. So a point is 1% of the loan amount. So for example, if I'm buying a house for $400,000 and I'm borrowing $300,000 and I get two points for on a hard money lender, which is typical, that's $6,000 additional closing costs. So it could be another $10,000 if you're getting a loan, right? Because there's going to be some kind of bullshit fees in there too. So we're talking about without getting a loan around 10, with getting a loan 15 to 20, that's closing costs for the buyer. Now what closing costs do you have as a seller? You also have a legal fee, right? So let's say between $1,500 and $3,000 to be fair. fair. And um, you are going to have to pay any taxes that were due as a seller. So you might have let's, let's, so sometimes I'll, buy, I'll I'll prepay taxes that are due in the next three months, but then I'll I'll have the property for six months. I'm going to pay extra three months worth of taxes. You're going to have to pay transfer tax when you sell, which is four dollars per thousand in New York. So if I'm selling something for a hundred thousand dollars, it is four hundred dollars. For five hundred five hundred thousand dollars, it's two thousand dollars in transfer tax. Um, and I'm going to have to pay possibly a recording fee for the deed to the title company because um, they're going to record. No, no, I'm sorry, the borrower is going to pay for the recording time for the deed. But if I'm satisfying a mortgage, then the, that we're going to have to satisfy that. So it's not. Oh, and the biggest part of the of the closing costs on a sale is if you listed the property with a with an agent, right? The buyer's agent is going to take some money. So or or or, or both. So I, I'm thinking sort of in my head, but so I'm I I'm a broker and I'll list my own properties, but um. But even if I list my own property, it's not uncommon for a buyer's agent to come and I'll have to pay them 2%. So I'm selling something for $500,000. That's $10,000 right there. So it's it, it's very common for me to have $10,000 on the buy, $15,000 on sale. That's the kind of numbers that I that work all the time. Unless it's a bigger property, in which case it'll be, you know, 15 on the buy and, and 20 on the sale, which is insane, right? And that affects a lot of how we do things, right? In other parts of the country, you could double close. Sorry, you can double close and it costs 1200 bucks, 600 bucks, whatever the hell it is, it's something small. In New York, double closing costs a fortune, right? You got to do, you got both ends of those. You may not, you won't have a, um, a buyer's agent commission on a double close, but you're still going to have a lot of money, right? The biggest deal I ever did was five houses from one seller that I wholesaled to another buyer. And there was a reason why I had to double close on it. And it was, uh, was I was buying them for 750000 I sold them for 975 so that's a $225,000 spread, but I had to double close and it cost me 40 grand to double close. I still made $180,000, best deal I ever did. <coughs> Sorry, I gotta get some water, I'm dying. Um, 
So, um, but you gotta say it cost me forty grand. That's not cheap. That's a lot of freaking money. That's more than a deal for me. So you've got to understand the closing costs. Now, in certain parts of the country, it is customary for the buyer to take on the closing costs. Now, what we're talking about, 600 bucks, 800 bucks, and the buyer say, I'll cover your closing costs. That's really, I think, where this, where this question came from. It is not customary in New York for either party to take on either a part, uh, the other party's closing costs. Now, I very often send, I send out a ton of mail. If you could see here, there's thousands of return postcards. I don't know why I keep them. But um, sometimes in the postcard, I don't really look at what it says, and it says, I'll cover your closing costs. So I get somebody who says, hey, will you cover the closing costs? Um, and then I have to figure out, you know, based on the amount of money I think I can make, could I cover the closing costs? Sometimes the seller calls and costs, I'll cover the transfer tax. Sometimes I'll cover the attorney's fee. Sometimes I won't cover the attorney fee. It really depends on a case by case basis, but based on how much money I'm making and based on what I feel like my competition is doing also. So um, it's not typical in New York for either party to cover each other's closing costs. However, if you are a buyer of a piece of crap property, um, it's it's standard for the seller to pay his own closing costs. Now, again, in other parts of the country, it's not. So the question really is like, how do you get a seller to pay his own closing costs? Because the way it works, let, let's just explain how real estate transactions work in other states and how they work in New York. In other states, a transaction takes place between a buyer and a seller. I'm a buyer, you're a seller. I say, I'd like to buy your house for $300,000. You say, great. I pull out a contract. We sign the contract. We're in contract. Seems almost comical to me. That's how it works in 49 states of the United, uh, in our country. In New York, it doesn't work like that. We agree on a price. Then the seller's attorney prepares a contract, sends it to the buyer's attorney, and the, the whole back and forth goes goes between the seller's attorney and a buyer's attorney, not between a buyer and a seller. And there is always going to be negotiation about certain things. Sometimes they negotiate over stupid things, and sometimes they negotiate over important things. Now, one of the things they can negotiate over is who's going to cover the closing costs. So it's happened that a seller said, I'm willing to sell it to you, but I want you to cover my closing costs. And then you have to decide whether that's going to work or not. So during that process you have to, to have a discussion about it and if you've discussed it before and then, then you know I, i've i've sent a postcard out not realize which what postcard the guy read the guy came back to me sent, sent his attorney sent me a contract and it said i'm covering the closing costs and i'm like i don't even know what what so i call the seller and i'm like what's going on he was like yeah well you told me your postcard i'm like oh, okay let me tell you what i'm going to cover or what i'm not going to cover and we can talk about that so it's also people don't understand how much it means so it's funny because in other parts of the country a seller would never pay the closing costs in certain places but we're talking about six hundred dollars. But in New York, when the seller is going to pay ten thousand dollars in closing costs, it's just accepted. It's customary for the area, and it's really based on what his attorney is going to tell him. Now, in other parts of the country, there is no attorney. So the guy says, "I'm selling you the house for hundred thousand dollars. I want a hundred thousand dollars. I want a penny freaking less, right?" And there may not be transfer tax there, and there, may, and there clearly, probably is not going to be a um, a buyer's agent to pay. So in a cash buyer transaction in other states. That guy wants a check for that amount, every freaking dollar. So he doesn't want to be deal to talk about closing costs, right? And and even though they're minuscule, he doesn't want to deal with them. So the buyer usually covers them in a lot of places. So it, it, it really depends on the place. But in New York, um, you know, it's typical for the seller to pay his own closing costs and the buyer to pay their own. And they're both in, 10 times more than in other states. That's just the way it works. And I get calls all the time from people who took some guru's course, you know, maybe somebody good from North Carolina or from Phoenix, and they start asking me questions that I know come from other states. Like, well, do I have to cover the closing costs? I'm like, in New York, you shouldn't even bring it up. Right? You could, but you really don't have to. Um, it's something you can talk about later. And it's just very, very, very different in New York than the other four United states. So, I mean, I hope this was helpful. I basically talked about what closing costs are. Um, but in New York, it's not typical for one party to pay the other party's closing costs. They are incredibly large, <laughs> these closing costs, so you need to be aware of them, but you don't have to worry about the other sides. You have to worry about your sides, whichever, depending on which side of the transaction you're on. Um, so I hope this was helpful. If you want all the information about other ways I can help you, help you go to howtoflipnewyork.com. If you are interested in finding out more about a course I have that teaches how to do what I do, go to howtoflipnewyorkcourse.com. If you're interested in finding out more about one-on-one -on -one coaching that I provide, um, go to coaching.howtoflipnewyork.com. What else? Oh, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching on any channel, please click the thumbs up. The likes really help me. They A lot more people are seeing my videos, so uh, I thank you for all your likes. And what else? Oh, 
if I please keep the comments coming. I try to post five times a week. I don't always know what to talk about. Any comment is fine. It doesn't have to be about the topic you're watching on the video. I, when I see my list of comments, I don't care what video it's on. Um, if it's a simple answer, I'll just reply with an answer. If it's something um, that I've covered before, I'll send you links to the videos. And if it's a new topic, I will do a new video on it. So thank you very, very much for watching.